There's a lot of opinion. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of ways, not, there's not a lot of ways, but there are a lot of opinions and different ways of doing deliverance. And what we want to do is find unity on the team. We're not saying the way you do it or the way you've been taught is wrong. Just for the sake of unity on a team, we're going to ask that you kind of do it the way that we are approaching it. And this is really road tested. This works. So we're not handing you something that doesn't work. But, you know, I was just aware of it. I travel with another ministry and some deliverance uh, broke out and no protocols were in place. We didn't, nobody had it really organized. And it was just chaos. And because you got people, you know, for varying motivations, all trying to do their thing. And so that's what we want to avoid. We need, if you uh, understand how the enemy works, he likes to humiliate the person and put on a show. Yep. And so we don't want to accommodate any of that nonsense. Mm -hmm. And so there's a way to do it. Way to do deliverance very calm. You know, I, I've uh, been in prison ministry. <laughs> I've been in prison. <laughs> I'm you know, I'm speaking from authority here. Uh, doing prison ministry, I've done deliverance just whispering in somebody's ear. Wow. Yeah. It can be a very calm process. So, I want to walk through uh, a few things, and we've got a handout at the end because I could teach you how to do deliverance in about 30 seconds. But I like to build a biblical basis for it and for your authority so that when you step into that realm, you got the boldness you need to take authority. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I love dialogue. I don't like monologue. So I need some interaction because that's how I know how to tweak it. Every audience that I speak to have different things going on. And it's one of the ways the Holy Spirit leads it. So if you guys interact with me, uh, it's going to help answer questions that somebody else has probably asked. Does that make sense? Yeah, yes, sir. So you don't even have to raise your hand. Just jump in. And this is it. You're actually doing what I call paramedic level deliverance. Like you're not going to spend two hours getting somebody free getting every spirit off of them. And so what you've got, you're, you're there as a paramedic. You're there to stop the bleeding, get them in peace, so that you can send them to the hospital. Come on. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yep. So if you just shift a little bit uh, in your thinking, because even when I do two-hour sessions, there's still stuff. You're not going to get everything you know, that that person needs in one time setting, because one, God doesn't do that. If he put his finger on everything that was going on with us, we implode. Yeah. He does it, he kills us in layers. Yeah. So if you can shift from, you know, I got to get them free to I got to get them in a place of peace where they can go get some more healing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and in, that, and in that place, I want to touch on a little bit more about, you know, when, when we do deliverance, there's something about it. It just, man, everybody's curiosity is up. It starts drawing a crowd. You know, people want to see what's happening. They want to jump in and give their thing. And we're gonna we're gonna just have one person doing deliverance. Right? One person's in authority, and maybe one or two that are that are there in uh, intercession. But what happens is that spirit will start triangulating people. Yeah. Because nobody's in charge, uh, I know of a I know of a uh, deliverance guy that there was deliverance breaking out in this lady's house, and it was interesting. It was a Baptist pastor was uh, over at the lady's house, and he'd been making fun of this guy that I know about you know all the crazy charismatic stuff he's involved in, and then they were over praying with this lady. It was several of them over there, and a pretty wild deliverance, a rodeo broke out. You know, and she's throwing them around. There's stuff, you know, <laughs> flying around the room. And they call in a panic, and he goes over there after they've been at it for a while. And it looked like the seven sons of Skiba when he gets over there. They're bloody. And I don't think they were naked, but they were beat up. And uh, he walks in the room, and she was down, and he said she just levitated, went, right, baby. Wow. 
And he said, I had a chill run down my spine. He goes, but I told that spirit, don't do that again. Get peace. And that spirit said to him, I, you know, I'm, I'm really tired of this. I would have left a long time ago, but I didn't know who was in charge. So we need one person in authority speaking with authority. And we don't want to draw a crowd. Because that's what the enemy wants. He wants to put on a show and really humiliate that person. That's humiliating. Uh, especially if you're not familiar with it and you got something going on you didn't even know was there. And everybody's gathered around screaming and yelling. That's not deliverance. No. And the demons are not hard of hearing. No. When you speak with authority, they go. Like I said, I've whispered demons out of the... There's a prisoner standing up and I was just walking through uh, breaking agreement with spirits and I just started speaking. It looked like I was just praying over it. And he stupidly, totally, he could feel it lifting off of him. So we don't have to scream and yell. We don't have to put on, you don't have to stand on your head and do all of these gymnastics because if there's two reasons they're leaving. You found what the spirit was, you got the person to break agreement with it. I use that language because a lot of times words get, you know, they, they become religious. Repentance is one of those words. Really what they're doing is repenting, but we've added so much stuff to what repentance is. I just use break agreement. And you get up to break agreement, and then you command it to go in Jesus' name. Now you're highly trained professionally. That's really all deliverance is. You find out what's there, they break agreement with it, you command it to go in Jesus' name. That's it? Yes, I can go. Yeah. Is it possible for people to get free without breaking agreement? Pretty tough. I have when the anointing's really flowing. I've had uh, I've had them walk in my office and start getting delivered. I have just walked over and laid hands on people and they started getting delivered. But I don't count on that. You know, my plan B is they got to break agreement, and I can tell you stories. Um, if they're not leaving within a pretty short period of time, 10, 15 minutes, they're still in agreement in place. Yep. And I'll, I'll save hours off your deliverance time. Because people sit there and try to power them out. They don't know what's there. And they're just yelling at the demon. Yeah. They're sitting there and just having a good time. It's not going anywhere. Yeah. As long as that person's in agreement with it, that spirit's not going anywhere. Yep. Is the breaking agreement uh, parallel with submit therefore to God and then you resist the devil from James? Um... I like that. I don't. I don't use that language, but the concept. Okay. So you're bringing up. Uh, I'm jump. I'm going to jump around. My notes are already gone, so I'm already jumping all over the place. <laughs> but you're bringing up a uh, a great point. Is I have a standing order from the Lord that I don't do deliverance on unbelievers. Mm -hmm. That's good. Now, do I know people that have an anointing for that? So this is just me. Uh, as a rule, I don't do deliverance on unbelievers. I lead them to Christ first, then I do deliverance. Yeah, sure. And the reason is, uh, it's the passage, and I've got it in here somewhere, but you'll know it when I start talking about it. You know, when Jesus talks about when the Spirit leaves a man, he goes to water his places, uh, and then he decides to return, and he finds the house swept, clean, and here's the key, unoccupied. And then he goes back and he finds seven spirits more wicked than himself return in that man's state. The last state is worse than before. Right. And a lot of people are confused on that passage because they think, I've had them ask me, well, if you get spirits off people, yeah. isn't it going to be, if they return to it, isn't it going to be worse? I find the opposite is true with believers. Yeah. If I get them free and they get, I'll call it reinfected, I got bad deliverance here, my so. <laughs> You gotta have a sense of humor when you do this stuff. Uh, and they come back, I find it twice as easy to get them free the next time. Because wow. what they've done, they broke that stronghold. Yeah. And then anytime they've logged in freedom, is now weakened what they were uh, entrapped to. So it's actually easier to get them free. An unbeliever, I'm just not willing to play Russian roulette with their, with their soul. Because if I get demons off of them, one, it's really hard to do. Yeah. Because they don't even know. I mean, they got agreements you can't even imagine, right? 
So one, it's going to be a really tough deliverance. It's going to be one of those that you're up there till you know four in the morning, and you're still. Uh, it's just uh, it's just wisdom. It's easier, and I don't really. Um, I just don't want to go down that path. You know, Michael Miller was telling me a story that he was uh, he was at a deliverance conference, and there was a Satanist there. And he's like, "What are you doing here?" He said, well, I came in here to get, get delivered of my demons. He said, because every time I do, I get an upgrade. I get seven more powerful than what I had before. Mm -hmm. So he keeps coming to these deliverance conferences and getting upgrades. That's how he described it. Oh. <laughs> so he understands that passage a lot better than a lot of yeah. us do. Wow. So, so tell them how, how you would approach that. Like if somebody's, you're, they're starting to manifest to make sure that they're a believer. So the first thing you want to do is command that spirit to be at peace. Just command it to be at peace. And what I find is if it's the spirit, they'll come into peace. But when the person has learned to partner with it and it won't go into peace, that person's probably part of the manifestation, if that makes sense. Yeah. So you want to command that spirit to be at peace and you want to talk to the person. And well, I'll, I'll give you a, I'll just tell you a, a real situation that happened to me. So I was in uh, Minnesota with a, uh, with a team and it was a, it's actually kind of revived. I do their inner healing deliverance stuff. And so we were there and we had, we had teams and this one guy just said he wanted inner healing prayer. He wasn't sleeping well and something else. And so we went over there and there was a young guy with me that wanted to, I mean, he was learning and he uh, wanted to uh, do the prayer. Well, about maybe a minute into the prayer, this guy does a back flip. We're outside in a football stadium. I mean, he goes over backwards and wipes out some chairs and he starts screaming, thrashing around on the ground. Well, he's over and rebuking and, you know, I got my person in authority role and he's sitting there having no effect, and I look at him, and I said, are you ready for me to jump in? He said, yes. And I get up, and oh, and the guy had told us in the interview that he was a believer, he said all the right things. And so, uh, you know, I, he's laying on his back, and he's, he's uh, I just come in at spirit to be at peace, and I, and I called the guy's name, it was Trey, I said, Trey, I need to speak to Trey, and he, he comes around, and I said, uh, is there somebody you need to forgive? I'm going down the believer path. Yeah. So that's, you know, that's the biggest open door most people have is unforgiveness. Yeah. So I started, is there somebody you need to forgive? He goes, yeah, my father, I can't forgive him. And as soon as he said, I can't forgive him, he said, I can't forgive him because he abandoned me. Mm -hmm. And hear the Holy Spirit say, he's not a believer. Wow. And I go, oh, I said, Trey, have you ever received Jesus? He said, I mouthed some words when I was a kid, but I didn't mean it. And he said, I can't because I don't, the, you know, I can't remember, he had an issue with the resurrection. So I spent like 20 minutes apologetic with this guy <laughs> on the resurrection. And finally goes, yeah, man, I'm, I'm ready. And I'm not adding to the gospel, but in this case, I wanted this guy to let him and the demons know that he was really saved. So I had him, I want you to cry out to Jesus to save me. Now, I don't get the gospel that way, but I did in that instant. And so I had him cry out. And he just started crying, Jesus saved me. He's bawling. He's in it. And uh, as soon as he uh, did that, I laid hands on him, and I just said, Holy Spirit, fill him. And he started speaking in tongues. Wow. <laughs> then that demon started manifesting again. And uh, then, I, then I got it off, and another one started. I got it off. And then his uh, aunt comes over and shuts the whole thing down. Wow. And I started talking to her. And, you know, they're like, I've been, the uncle said, I've been working on him for years. You're not going to get him free. I said, has he ever received Jesus before? He goes, no. I said, he just did. I said, has he ever spoken in tongues before? Obviously, you know, he had to feel a believer, but he said, no. I said, he just did. I'm like, I don't have an ego in this, but you got a power over him, over the situation now that you didn't have before, and he's ready. Somebody needs to get him free. Yeah. And they, you know, they took off hope he got him free. So that was just sort of a, a demo of how I do it. <clears throat> what I said to him, when he said I mouthed some words, but I didn't mean it, and I said, 
Trey, my authority is in Jesus. If you don't receive him, I have no authority here. Wow. It was just my way to say, and I said, I know how to get you free. Wow. So that's how I did. Thank God I want to be free. Yes. What if they're not in agreement? Uh, one is not wanting to break the agreement. Yeah. And I just say, I pray peace over you. Yeah. And you got to, you know, if you can't, if it's a big manifestation uh, and they don't want to be free, we'll just pray peace over them and we'll walk them out the door. Yeah. You can't get some, you know, you know that your free will is so precious to Jesus. I get weepy over it. I watch on a daily basis how precious your free will is. Wow. And he doesn't violate it. If you don't want to be free, you're not going to be free. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you differentiate between oppression and possession? Good question. So, this is a, this is a, uh, I believe this has caused so much confusion in folks that, uh, see if I can find my notes here. I'm jumping all over the place. I'll probably just have to do it from memory because I'm not seeing it. Here it is. So there's a, you know, God gave me an analogy that really explains a lot for me because I'm from Tennessee. I've got to make simple you know, analogies. And he showed me that the road of truth has two ditches. And what happens is we'll see an error or involved in one, and that'll be a ditch. And we get out of that ditch, and instead of letting the Holy Spirit get us on the road of truth, we overreact and we run over here to this ditch. And then we start railing on the other ditch. Man, the mud in this ditch is cool on my toes. Like it feels awesome. It's nice and squishy. The mud in that ditch has rocks all in it. You know, cut your feet up, people in that ditch are idiots. Right? And instead of staying in the truth, and so the King James took the Greek word dominatsamai and translated it demon possessed. And if you go research that word, especially here in the West, when we hear possession, we think ownership. Right? And that word is really talking about control. It's talking about levels of control. Because if you think about it, Jesus says that the, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Thieves can't own anything. So it's not a matter of ownership. It's a, ma it's a matter of levels of control. So demonization is a better translation for that. Especially when you start doing it experientially. I've prayed with people that you would have said are totally possessed. There was a guy I prayed with in another state. I call it, uh, when they get to that place, they slip over into what I like to call it, they've lost uh, their will. They've lost the ability to say no. But that demon still doesn't own them, otherwise you couldn't get them free. It sounds like God has to make a payment to get somebody free. That's not the case at all. It's levels of control, and whenever they break agreement, boom, you can get that spirit out. I don't care how far they've gone. If you've got them aware enough to where some of them, I, this one guy, like it took me about... 40 minutes to get the first spirit off because he was so oppressed. He's just looking around and his gibberish is coming out. You know, and I, I, I can't remember his name. I'll just say Bill. Sorry, Bill, if there's a Bill in the room. Uh, and I would say, look at me, look at me. And I'd have to just keep dialing him in. He finally said, you know, they're lying to me. I'm going, you want to get free of that? Yes. I said, look at me. And he broke the agreement. I got the first spirit off. Then the door started cracking. And I sat there for four hours and got him back to a place, we're sitting there joking, eye contact, he's totally back in home. But he was that close to being gone, and then he was gonna come back the next day and do the inner healing. I don't like to do deliverance without inner healing. Uh, so he was gonna come back the next day, and somebody saw him, and he's back on meth, he's back. I got him. You didn't, now you didn't do four hours where you were doing altar ministry. No, that wasn't altar ministry. That was me in a city doing the inner healing and deliverance. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I choose those. Uh, well, they choose me, the battles, but that's not somebody coming up front 
uh, it was it was a team member who had gone out and met this guy, and he was there, and they asked me if I would meet with him, and I knew what was going to happen because he was addicted to meth. Those are usually rodeos. And so I said yes, and so we stayed up there pretty late. So, the, you know, if, if it's a matter of possession, what the, the ditch is that people go, well, a believer can't be demon-possessed, therefore I don't have to worry about demons. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so that's the ditch I was trying to, I lost my analogy. <laughs> and uh, so we don't worry about them, we just kick them out. We break the agreement with them, we kick them out. But that has created this whole a uh, branch of theology that thinks that we don't have issues with demons. That's why Paul says in Ephesians 6.12, your struggle is not against flesh and blood, it's against powers, principalities, world forces of darkness, wickedness, heavenly places. We don't have to worry about it, but we've got to know where the struggle is. Yeah. And I like to say to people, you know, when you ask them, what does that mean our struggle is not against flesh and blood? Typically, we think in terms of well, I'm not in conflict with somebody else. And I'll say, well, aren't you flesh and blood? You're not in conflict with yourself either. That conflict that's going on is with the enemy. And it's genius of the enemy to get us to blame us for what he's up to. Yes. Mm. Now, the extreme of that, you can walk around saying the devil made me do it and take no ownership. I get that. Yeah. But a lot of people are just in conflict and a lot of conversations are going on in their head that's not God, it's not them. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. I had no idea. I didn't even look at the time when I You're started. Good. You're good. Okay. Hmm. Probably we're next. I want you to, uh, did that clear up the demon possession question? I got a question. Now. Sure. Go ahead. So if they're manifesting and then you silence the demon, bring them back to their normal consciousness, have them renounce. I've done that before, and then sometimes they'll, and then they'll just be normal, right? But then sometimes I wonder, like, did they really get free? Because like, I didn't see like a dramatic thing of like the demon came out. You know, it was like I just called them back to their normal consciousness, had them renounce, you know, forgiveness or a sin or bondage or whatever, and then they're like, oh, I'm good, and then they just went home. And I'm like, well, were they really delivered? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, it could flare up again, you know, six months from now. Like, how do you how do you gauge that? So it's a it's one of the nine supernatural gifts. Uh, in First Corinthians twelve is discerning of spirits, mm -hmm. and you can actually grow in it. Hebrews five tells you about it. it says that solid food is for the mature, mm -hmm. who through practice have trained their senses to discern good and evil. Mm -hmm. So I actually can. And you can discern a lot of ways. Some people see, some people feel, yeah. uh, some people can hear, and some people just know, right? And so all of that, you are hardwired to experience the supernatural realm. Mm -hmm. It's just learning to tap into it. Mm -hmm. And so I'm pretty, uh, I can see, uh, usually eyes closed, I can see. I have to shut my eyes to do that, to concentrate on it. Uh, but my feeler is like hyper accurate. And so I kind of try to force myself to see more, but I can, uh, when I get close in a session or get around, uh, boy, it feels like my head's in a vice. You get the head squeeze. And for about four months during sessions, when I pray with people, he started uh, giving me words of knowledge because I'm training people as I'm doing healing. You know, I want to teach them how to fish, and I just give them the fish. And so I'm training them in discernment. And so I feel on my body what they were feeling. I'd say, you feel that? Mine's always a head squeeze when it's just me. I'd feel like this pressure on the back of my neck. And I'd say, you feel that pressure on the back of your neck? I'm like, yeah, so I want you to pay attention. That's how you're sensing the demonic realm. You're going to feel that lift in just a minute. And I found that as, as I started coaching people, it's like 100%. They were, boom, they got it. Before, I used to ask, did you feel that spirit leave or sense that spirit leave? Sometimes yes. I mean, a lot of times yes, but sometimes no. Since I started, like, coaching them in it, it's almost 100%. They'll feel that thing with them. 
It's just people aren't aware of what they're feeling. Sometimes they'll say, well, I just feel heavy. Yeah, you feel heavy because there's a spirit of heaviness on you and it's pressing on your chest. So just engaging our senses because it's the way that God hits your demon radar. Right? Yes? I've got a question. I was in a Bible study and they were And there was this young girl, she was crying, there was someone trying to console her and that sort of thing. So I went over and started to talk with her and she was crying because she had autism and so she was different than the other kids and she just fell out of place. Um, but as we started to talk, she showed me her journal and in her journal she had drawn demons and the demon's name was autism. Whoa. And so, I was by myself, basically, is how I felt. So I, I didn't really know what to do in that situation, but, I, but I've but i heard that if you've seen it, you can have it. Like, if the Lord shows you that, then you can have it. So, you know, I, like I said, I was in an environment by myself, but should, should we have walked her through deliverance of autism if it was that easy, you know? Um, I'm going to tell you because we're kind of paramedic level stuff I want us to be cautious before we go after things like autism yeah. now if you've got a deliverance ministry yes but on the altar team uh, I'm going to caution going after things like that because there's been a lot of people that go after deliverance like that like cerebral palsy autism um, and there's a, there's a lot of caution and care that needs to be around that. Because you can really damage somebody, you know, going after them like that. I think you need a lot more uh, time with them and prayer and listening to the Lord. Anytime there's healing involved, I always ask them, is this physical or spiritual? You can have physical stuff. I want to know, and if it's spiritual, I'm going to go about it in a very loving, careful way. I know too many people that have gotten really messed up from people just hard charging yeah. want to get a demon off and we just need to be cautious in those areas do i believe that's a spirit if he showed it to you yeah but you did the wise thing because you didn't have enough experience to go after something like that does that make sense yeah. yes Um, there's some truth to it. It can happen. I think a lot of times it's happening to us. I used to teach it. I used to in my seminars. I teach on transference. You know, when you're when you're uh, doing deliverance, take your hand off the person. You know, because they can transfer. And then uh, about three years into my ministry, praying with a lady, and uh, it was actually somebody that was uh, I was training. And she was manifesting, and it was being a little sticky, wasn't going very fast. And I heard the Holy Spirit say, go lay hands on her neck. And I'm like, ah, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't like cleaning up when I get through. And he said, do it. And so I go over there and lay hands, and it was like a rocket propelled demon out, right? <laughs> I think a lot of times it's transferring because we haven't gotten really uh, solid in our authority. Um, but yes, it can happen. But those aren't those are easy to clean up from because there's no agreement. Yeah. Yeah. You just command it. You, we need to be in the habit of that anyway. Yeah. Yeah. When you get good ministry for the day, wow. just clean each other up. Any sliming. You know, we get that word sliming. Have y'all ever seen Ghostbusters? Yeah. The green slime. <laughs> you know, that's what it is. And we just we just want to dust off. Yeah. And anything that transferred, there's no agreement. So it's like yeah. it's nothing. Life. And you yes. want to wake up putting that hedge of protection on you every morning. You don't want to get out in the battlefield without that armor on. Amen. Yeah. Could you give us some examples of coming out of agreement? What are two or three good examples yeah. of that? Um, do you mean a, uh, a story or a... Uh, just a simple statement or a word yeah. of knowledge? Or yeah, I just, yeah. you know, <clears throat> I'll take, I'll give you a little... Uh, the Siamese twins of deliverance. It's the only two I know that travel in pairs, uh, fear and control. You'll never have control without fear. You'll never have fear without control. 
And so if I was praying with somebody, um, you know, I would just say, uh, just pray this. And Father God, you know, I break all agreement with the spirits of fear and control. And I break their power off my life in Jesus' name. It's about it. The person has to say that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I lead them through a prayer. I'll, I'll, that's all it takes. All we need is for them to break agreement. Yeah, that thing's got to go. And then you, like, declare over them? Like, I just start commanding it to go. Okay. I say, fear and control, you got to go. And, uh, yes. Because you have, you are hardwired to hear from the Holy Spirit. He's sitting there telling you what's there, which is another great point I'm going to jump into real quick. Uh, there are ministries that talk to demons. You know, they they uh, start talking to the demon to find out what's you know how it got there, what's it doing, all that kind of stuff. And so, <clears throat> many years ago when I started, you know, I had been I had gotten some very ineffective ministry from a ministry that did that. And then I read a couple of books, went to a seminar. Uh, I was on a long journey. Really, he took me on a journey. Uh, outside of that because that's what I was doing at first you know I was speaking to demons through the person which you can do it's effective I started realizing I was traumatizing the person I was praying with I'm watching them and then when I said it I couldn't believe I said it uh, I was really getting weary of it I'm like there's got to be I gotta do this different and I asked the last person I ever did that with I said well, <laughs> I can't believe I said this I said, what would bother you if I speak to a demon through you? And as soon as those words left my mouth, I went, that's the dumbest thing you've ever yeah. asked. Them. And they looked at me kind of like, uh, I don't know. And so I just, um, I just don't do that. You don't have to. Do you want to talk to somebody that's going to lie to you? Or do you want to talk to the spirit of truth? Come on. He's telling you what's there if you just listen. That's so good. And he calls them out by their function. You know, it's not as sexy as some ancient, you know, Egyptian, you know, God from the underworld. He just says it's a spirit of fear. Yeah. Spirit of heaviness. Yeah. Spirit of depression. Yeah. And yeah. by the way that language works, you know, you know the concept, but you get like I was in Sri Lanka, I got used to go to Sri Lanka all the time. And you get over there, and it's funny how those demons speak English. <laughs> Because you're speaking with authority and you're commanding that spirit of fear to go and it goes. Right? Yes. Right? Yes. Um, when we're using the term uh, break agreement, mm -hmm. some people might say renouncing. Or yeah. do you make a distinction about who those words are spoken to? In other words, I, you're speaking to a demonic spirit. This is the person receiving ministry. That they are speaking to that spirit rather than a prayer to God. In other words, I break agreement with you, spirit of fear, in the name of Jesus. You can. I, I do the prayer, and it works. You can do either one. That's what I'm saying. There's a lot of ways to do this. Uh, I just have him pray and say, Father God, I break agreement with the spirit of fear because one, he's declaring, I want to be free to the throne room. Mm -hmm. That's the authority I'm tapping into. Um, does God hear it if you say, I break, I break agreement with you, spirit of fear? Sure. You can say, renounce. You can say, I repent. What it is, is they are no longer willing to partner with that spirit. Sometimes they use the word partner. Mm -hmm. I repent for partnering with the spirit of fear. So I find either one works. What I find doesn't work is trying to get spirits off without them doing that. That's right. I can tell you a couple of, I don't know how I'm doing on time. How are we doing? You're good. Yes. Um, for the task oriented people, and say, what I am one of them, if you're at the altar and you're ministering to someone, um, and you know, there's always like, you don't have to go home, you just can't stay here. Like they, they want you out of the building. <laughs> I know that you're someone when you do minister on the altar, you're almost always the last person there. How, Sorry. <laughs> that's not, that's not, how 
do you um, do you ever take people outside, or do you just continue? No, it's a great question. We need to. We need to honor <laughs> guilty. Uh, That's not what I was saying. I know, I know. I'm being funny with you. Uh, and, you know, Don and I were talking about this yesterday. If we get a big manifestation and they're not calming down, we're going to have a place. I, I don't know if you're going to announce it or not, but we're going to get them out of the, off the altar and into another room. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you'll find sometimes when you take them out of that place, all of a sudden that manifestation calms down. <laughs> Yeah. One, especially if you walk in authority, that spirit knows what's about to happen. <laughs> Plus, we're in a place of very high visibility in front of all the cameras and everything, and yes. the demon likes to make a show. Yeah. Now you've taken away that audience. Yes. That he's trying to get to. Yes. What would you say prevents people from walking in authority? Um, some of it is just doing it a few times. You know, you you uh. All this theology is a theory to you experience it. Wow. <laughs> you know, you get you get a nasty one, you know, going, you don't have the you know, speaking in a growling voice, you don't have the authority to do that. Yeah. You know, you feel a chill going down your spine. <laughs> yeah. 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 But the more you do it, like we all carry the same authority. Yeah. Yeah. Like I don't have more authority than you do. Mm -hmm. But I'm ex it's like we all got muscles, but you know. Some people work theirs out. Yeah. And so I have more, I call it spiritual street cred than you do right now. <laughs> but you might catch me one day. All that means is, like, I shifted from, um, I used to word it differently than I, I'm going to word it this way. Like, I don't operate out of faith anymore when I go in to the prayer room. Like, I know what's going to happen. <laughs> I, did, I, I don't, and those demons know it. Praise God. And I don't, I don't sit there and talk to them because they'll try to engage you. They'll try to get you to argue with them. Like, I got one thing to say about them and go, like, you're out. I don't listen to all the chatter. And they want to engage you. That's why I don't like the uh, protocol that people do of talking to demons. Yeah. yeah. That, that's what they want. Yeah. They want they're they like a two-year-old. They want attention however they get it. <laughs> really? I'm serious. They want attention. And so the more, I like to say there's levels of warfare. To me, the highest level of warfare is when you're so intimately connected to Jesus that the enemy becomes irrelevant. Yeah. Now now you're king of God. We engage them a whole lot more than we have to. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There's hands all over, but I think yours was first. Yeah, um, just in regards to authority, can you talk into, like, you know, how you have authority like I can't just go into like a country and start declaring right. war over a principality. Can you like So you're stepping outside of my uh, expertise which is intercession. We talk about inter intercessory prayer going and warn against principalities and regions and all that stuff. That's not my lane. So my lane is here and what I'll tell you with 100% Assurance and authority, whatever you face in deliverance, it is your fight you have authority over. Can I speak to that just for a second? Sure. There's a great teaching, if anybody wants it, from our minister. Okay, what was his name? Uh, the dream interpreter, the great dream interpreter. John Paul Jackson. John Paul Jackson, thank you. Unnecessary casualties of war. Yeah. And, and needless is, casualties of war. Needless, thank you. Needless <laughs> casualties of war. And in, just in general, it was where people were taking authority that they didn't have a right to take. <coughs> right? You're always safe to take authority to someone that comes to get ministry from right. you yeah. because yeah. they're submitting to you. Yeah. Right? You don't have a right to go into a city just because you're a believer and tear down every principality. Yeah. That you have to have, you've got to have great wisdom to know where you have authority. But in your own life, in your family's life, in your children's life, when friends come to minister, someone comes into Ray's office, that those are all safe places, right? And so there is a discernment. We could go into it a lot longer, but there is a discernment there. I'll, uh, I'll throw another book at you just to keep you uh, 
it melts. I feel like John Paul went too far with it, but yeah. there, okay. there's a book called The Real Reason for Deepest Casualty of War. And if you're going to read one, read the other. What a title. Just saying. Read them both and see where you end up. Uh, I can look it up for you before we leave. The real reason. Just, uh, and, and, and what his point is, is kind of the one that, that I'm trying to, it's a lot of times we invite uh, backlash because we're not walking in authority. Yeah. Uh, but I'm not, I'm, I'm staying out of the intercessor place. I'm not giving you intercessor's advice. I'm telling you in deliverance, if it's your fight, it's going down. Yeah. It doesn't matter what I'm dealing with principality, it doesn't matter. If it's your, if, he, if he's called you to that fight, it's going down. Five yes. minutes. Five minutes, okay. Any, oh man, I don't know. Were you next? Yes. Um, just like, uh, like I went through the where, in, uh, I didn't pull up this, and I didn't pull up that, where, um, with the, I used to do like evangelism on the street, and then this guy, when I just started to, to do it, this guy came to me and he said, you're not ready, but one day you will. So it was a demon that manifests, so the demons like recognize that you still, you know, like on your walk. So they do recognize authority and they do do it. But I still continue. Yeah, yeah, I lie. Yeah. I still continue. I didn't yeah. really believe. I thought yeah. whatever. I'm gonna continue. He was probably and his also, mind to you. Yeah. yeah, and then also um, um, for the intercession of like I used to to because when you first got saved, you like going ham, and then I used to cast out like inter like a principality and stuff like that. And my mentor, like the Lord spoke to her and came and she came to me she didn't know and she said the lord is telling you be careful of casting out principality doesn't want you to do that to not step into that because he hasn't given you the authority yet and i didn't understand because and it makes sense because when i used to do that i would get all the time attacked and insanity and i would get fever and i would get a, a lot of attacks so like i even had a lot of things like, but yeah so we want to make sure um, you know, on the altar team, if, if you get a check in your spirit, grab somebody else. Come on. Yeah. Ask him, is this my fight? Yeah. Yeah. I've learned the hard way to ask him if this is my fight. Mm -hmm. If it's your fight, it's going down. I don't care what it is. Uh, yes, sir. So I wanted to, uh, can we, um, I always want to smoke through this pretty quick. I only got all these group minutes coming out. So I did want to go through the handout. And this is kind of the how it's done. This is, you know, when I'm doing a training, I spend hours teaching all this stuff. You can see we can keep going for hours like this. Because there's a lot more. But the basics of deliverance are actually very simple. It's just having all that biblical basis so that when you step in there, you have the boldness of knowing who you are and the authority you carry. That's why we do all the background stuff. So the first, we want to communicate with the person, not the demon. And I want you to always come from a place of love. You know, 1 Corinthians 13 applies to deliverance too. If you're doing this for any other reason, and you're loving that person and want to see them free, yeah. it's worthless to God. Because yeah. you're going to do it rough, and you're going to do it because you need a notch on your Bible, and that's why we don't want all this stuff going on where there's multiple people yelling and jockeying for a position. That's, that's nonsense. It's got to be for the love of that person you want to see them <clears> free. <throat> if that's your motivation, you will never do any damage. Come on. We gotta identify the spirit. There's fast. Uh, the Holy Spirit is the main way that I identify, but you can also identify by talking to the person. I had a case where uh, they came and grabbed me. We were we were in another city, time revived. Kyle needs you downstairs now. I walk in the room. And there was a guy that manifested really big. He ran out the parking lot. They brought him in the room, and I had it was about. I think it was like 8.10, and I had a session at 8.30. I'm like, I got to move fast. So I walk in. I look at the guy. You know, ever received Jesus? He said, yes, and I'm, you know, confirmed. And I said, what's your biggest struggle? 
told me, hey, bring your grandmother up front of my spirit man. And I just kept going. What's your, what's your next biggest struggle? And you could, boom, it was leaving. He was manifesting out of where he was knowing it was going. And I get, I get down to about 825, and the last one, when it goes, he says, I've got tingling all in my arms and hands. And I said, that's, that's good. That's Holy Spirit. So I lay hands on him, and he starts getting hit with power. He starts shaking all over. And uh, so that, that last one cleaned out enough to where the Holy Spirit filled him up. Yeah. And I looked at my watch, 830. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and that one was, I was just going fast, and I was not like, yeah. it was moving so fast. I wasn't waiting on the Holy Spirit. I was just interviewing. A lot of times, you can discern what's there, you know, talking to the person. You know, if they're struggling with addiction, you know they got pharmacy and addiction on them, right? So there's some stuff you can just discern fast, uh, but you know the anyway. Does that make sense? So we got to identify what the spirit is. Just trying to power a spirit out without knowing what it is and without them breaking your agreement with it. Good luck. Bring your bring your lunch in there. I'll be quick. How do you? I guess. How do you combine like just being practical and using the experience you've had, but also like stewarding and like being in fellowship with the Holy Spirit? Just, like ask questions like you know, but also like be listening for the Holy Spirit. Yeah, like, both. Yeah, you just do both. Uh, you know, one of the one of the ways we receive words from the Lord is through perception. You know, you hear, see, sense, and perceive, and that's your knower. Sometimes you just know. And that's not because, you know, I was under the illusion that I was building up all this treasure of wisdom and, you know, and I was operating. And then uh, during, I, I did know that I was utilizing a gift. And then I uh, was in the prayer room, prayer with somebody, and it was like, like I didn't have anything. But they still got free. You know, it went on for a day or so, and I'm like, Lord, what's happening? It feels like you turn on. Turn my water off. He said, I did it. He said, you're trying to get your value from it. I'm not turning back on until you knock it off. Oh. And I learned the hard way. Can you say that again? What the Lord told you? Uh, I asked him. I said, it feels like you turned my water off. He said, I did. And he said, you're, you're starting to get your value from ministry. Wow. I'm not going to turn it back on until you knock it off. Yeah. It took about a month. The people were still getting free. I was like the guy sitting on the bench. Watching my baseball team win. Long way to nothing. Like, Put me in, coach. Put me in, coach. And then he turned it back on. It's like, whoa, man. That's actually a gift. That's not accumulated knowledge. Yeah. It's actually a gift. It's just perception. Yeah. So you're you're a knower, you're a perceiver, yes. Could you tell us your book and maybe one other book that you really recommend as far as more understanding? As far as deliverance goes, uh, well, thanks for the plug. <laughs> That's a good way to set it up. Yeah. Uh, beating the devil with his own stick. Um, I think we're out downstairs. I gotta get more there. But you can mining the It's all a place you can buy. Just about anything Ken Fish does. He's the only deliverance guy that I really like. Hmm. Ken Fish. Ken Fish. He's amazing. He's on another level. He's awesome. So we break agreement. We've already kind of covered that. We command the spirits to go in Jesus' name. We cast them out. You know, people go, well, where do you send them? I'm like, I don't know because there's no scripture that tells me. So I just send them to the feet of Jesus for judgment. That's what I do. I just want them out of the room and at his feet. He knows what to do with them. I don't. So that's where I send them. Yes. What if you live with people and there are spirits you recognize or do we have the authority, even if they are not believers, but it's in our house to send them off? Without them being free? I mean, without them agreeing? Yeah, like, you, I just... You I can, just what you can do is you can, uh, I call it putting a net on them. You can just put a net on those spirits in your, in your you know, I take authority over my house, and I come in every spirit, uh, you're not going to, you're not going to function in my house. Oh, yeah, that's right? But you can't get it off of them without their yeah. partnership, right? That's right. Does that make sense? Yeah. But you can take authority over your house. Okay. You know, one of the things I declare is everything in my atmosphere is surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus. 
If you're going to try to penetrate my atmosphere, you're going to bow the knee to Jesus. And I know you're not going to do it, so back off. Yeah. And I asked Holy Spirit to put me in a of peace. Yeah. I learned that one in Dubai. I was in the airport getting a spirit coming at me. My wife's saying, there's a nine-foot demon behind you with a knife. I go, I'm feeling <laughs> That's when I spit that out. When I said that, uh, boom, it all lifted. And I could see across the, he said, look across the walkway. And I saw a glass pane over there. It was like a glass wall. And uh, he said, go over there and look. There was a handprint. He said, go over there and look. See which side of the glass that's on. It was on the other side. He goes, that's what you just did. They can see you, but they can't do squat about it. Can you say it one more time? Uh, so this is this is the deal with atmospheres. If for you feelers in the room, this will help you. Uh, everything in my atmosphere is surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus. And so you're flipping it on them. So it's like you're walking in L.A. and you stepped into a Crips neighborhood. Right? They're making you show your colors. They're trying to intimidate you to keep you from walking in their neighborhood. But you carry your atmosphere where you go. Right. So I, in, in that case, I was in Dubai, and I said, I have a right to be here. I bought a plane ticket. I have authority Amen. where I'm at. Yeah, I have a right to be here. Everything in my atmosphere is surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus. And I flip it on them. Like, you're trying to come into my atmosphere. Yeah. If you're going to do that, you're going to surrender to the Lordship of Jesus. Yeah. So back off. Holy Spirit, put me in a bubble of peace. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, and then my favorite part, when they're cleaned out, they're the most vulnerable probably than they've ever been to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Boom. Yes. Can you talk about uh, when the Lord told the disciples that they're the kind that only come out with prayer and fasting? Yeah. So you can either think that he meant that demon that they were trying to get out. In that case, i got to walk around starving to death because I do deliverance every day. <laughs> Or you can realize, I believe what he was talking about is the spirit of unbelief that was on him. It's a whole other way to look at it, but I believe that's what was going on. He was talking about, and he scolded them for their unbelief. Mm, that's right. And he was saying, these kind only come out with prayer and fasting. Otherwise, you've got to walk around fasting all the time because you never know when you're going to get one of those bad ones. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yes. I understand that language. I understand that language. I'll leave it there. I think I'm way out of time. Everybody good? Two more? Mary, Mary quite the curry. He's pointing. Said you had a question. Just one question. When he said that prayer and fasting thing, so the unbelief, this might be a dumb question, but the unbelief, it comes out by prayer and fasting. Who's doing the prayer and fasting? The person who the demons come out of? Or well, I can't be dogmatic that that's what that passage means. Okay. It's just, uh, I feel like the Lord revealed that to me, and it makes the most sense to me, yeah. because I don't walk around fasting all the time. Yeah. And I kick demons of any rank every day. Like, And so, now, I do have to deal with, you know, my own stuff. There's, there's confusion in the room. I take authority over that atmosphere. <laughs> um, it's just the, it's just the one that makes the most sense to me, you know. Because you know the reason that I fast is typically there's some breakthrough I need, you know, and uh, and I get deliverance that way. I mean, I don't. I've a whole bunch of my inner healing and deliverance is just me and the Lord. Yeah. Get a lot done. Yes. Come on, I gotta stop. Okay, yeah, yeah. I was just gonna say to kind of like wrap it up. I would love to know, like, just to walk through an example. If you're at the altar, if someone comes up, just a quick, like, this is how you navigate it. So if they're manifesting, you know, if they start, well, I, I had this happen. Somebody came up, and, uh, you know, what do you need prayer for? <coughs> they needed to repent of something. I said, go ahead, boom, they hit the floor and start manifesting. And in that case, I went ahead because of... <coughs> I felt like I had to go ahead, and so I sat there and did it, about an hour and a half of deliverance. But we're not going to do that, okay? So if they're manifesting big, we're going to make we're going to make that spirit be at peace. And if it won't, then we're going to Don's going to we're going to have a room, I think, aren't we? Yeah. We're going to have a room that we're going to go to, uh, and we're going to do the deliverance there. Yeah. And so. You're praying with somebody and they're struggling with fear or anxiety, just have a break agreement with it. 
and you just very calmly and very low voice start commanding it to go. And they'll feel it left. And you always ask them to check in with them. I can feel stuff when I leave, but I always check with them. Did you did you sense that that left? The way I word it sense, don't because sometimes I see it go. I mean it's really simple. And the only time it turns in, when it turns into a rodeo, we're going to get them out of that environment and in a safe place. Because we, we don't want to put on a show. I don't think we're afraid of messy church. We just, there's no reason giving a demon an audience. Yes. Would you, uh, would you close in prayer over, I mean, before we transition, just yes. kind of do an impartation for yes. the group. Thank you. Yeah, and this stirs some stuff up, these conversations. If you feel stirred up, right, you just go pray peace and get in a conversation with the Lord of what's going on inside. Because it's always stir some stuff up when we talk about this stuff. So Jesus, I thank you that you have defeated every spirit of any rank. That even the devil himself, you had a total defeat. And then you have commissioned us to do the same thing you did. And part of the Great Commission is casting out demons. And so Jesus, I ask that it would always be from a place of love. I ask that we would always care more about that person than fighting a demon. And God, we would uh, just operate from that safe place with you, that we would listen to you, that we would know what we're stepping into, the battlefield we're on, that we would know our fight, we'd know our lane, and we would stay within that lane. And I just pray right now, Lord, anything that's on my life that every person in the room would need, I ask that you would also impart that to them. We just uh, release discernment. I pray that discerning of spirits would increase that it would heighten however that manifests is hearing, seeing, or sensing or perceiving whatever uh, whatever way that activates I just release that right now in Jesus name and Lord I ask for boldness that our, that our authority is in you when we realize it doesn't have anything to do with us it's your authority. Yeah. Yeah. It creates boldness in us. Because we can't get talked out of that. We know how powerful you are. And so we just uh, ask for a release of trusting in your authority. The faith that you've imparted to me, I ask that you would also release that on this group. And so that we would operate from confidence and not fear. And that we would know what to do. And I pray just uh, peace, that we would always walk in peace because you're the God of all peace and you crushed Satan under our feet shod with the gospel of peace. It's peace that destroys the enemy. And I thank you for the peace that is a crushing weight and blow to the enemy's head. In Jesus' name, amen.